Okay, we're starting the current Council of Governments workshop, biz fed by um, Lois Henry. You're up. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Thank you all for having me. It's so good to see everybody. Um, okay, I'm just going to jump right into this, and um, you all have packets that have the um, PowerPoint presentation, which I am just going to flip through because I personally hate it when someone gives me a PowerPoint and then reads it to me. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and I think that people have better questions than I uh, have, you know, just sort of a standard um presentation. So I'm just going to explain to you what BizFed is. Um, BizFed is a, it stands for Business Federation. We are a franchise. We are an independent franchise, Business Federation of Central Valley. So we're BizFed CV, BizFed Central Valley. The um, mothership is BizFed Los Angeles, which started about 10 years ago. They actually are having their 10-year anniversary here just recently. And um, they have become very, very successful there, and a number of business uh, leaders here in Kern County and in other parts of the Central Valley w who were members of the LA BizFed went to them and asked them to start a franchise here. So that's how we came here. That's, that's, it, it's not LA coming up here and trying to bigfoot anybody. It's actual local business owners that wanted to bring the model here. And you're going to ask me, I'm sure everyone's like, well, how are you different than a chamber of commerce? How are you different than a trade association, et cetera, which are all the same questions I asked when I first started talking to BizFed. Um, it's a different con uh, it's sort of a concept. It's a little bit unique, a little hard to get your head around because it's never existed before they started it up in L.A. It is an association of associations. It is a chamber of chambers. We have um, a number of different uh, – we want – as many business associations as we can put together in into BizFed, we want businesses and individual um, nonprofits. You'll see um, in the packet I have a little grid of who's become a member so far of BizFed Central Valley, and you can sort of see they I've got Clinica Sierra Vista, that's an independent nonprofit. We've got the Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, some trade associations, obviously some individual companies like Wonderful, etc. You bring all of these diverse groups together, and they're not always going to agree on everything, obviously. Um, you know, you can't get 100%, and, and BizFed is not about being lockstep anyway. But where we can agree on areas of economic interest that affect all of us, then we can move forward with a message to politicians and um, regulators that is very, very difficult to ignore. Um, because oftentimes uh, people will – industries will be fighting on their own, uh, the trucking association or the retail associations or a farming operation, and they have maybe a lobbyist if they, you know, can afford that. And typically government, I know I'm talking to a government agency and a lot of government folks here, so I don't want to be offensive about it, but a lot of times it becomes like, and one of the BizFed members told me this, it starts to feel like you're Charlie Brown's teacher. And the politicians and regulators see you on such a regular basis, they feel like they know what you're going to say. They know what you're going to um, complain about, or the lobbyist, you know, is so well known that um, people sort of, you know, tune out a little bit. But what the BizFed model is, is we bring, um, we educate each other, first of all, all the members, it's very member driven, the members educate each other, they inform each other, that they vet the policies and, and proposals that are coming out. and instead of it just being the same person constantly or the same organization constantly talking to government, government gets um, the viewpoint from a, a large variety, a diverse variety of their own taxpayers and constituents. And so they get to hear from you know, a number of people that might be affected by a proposal. And so that's why it tends to have a greater impact. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start if this works. We'll see. Go through the um, PowerPoint that's in the um, packet here. We're starting out with five counties. Um, we're going Madera to Kern right now because I'm the only person of, in the franchise, but the idea is to go all the way up to San Joaquin County. So we will be truly the um, all, all the counties. And just so anybody knows, um, I am also looking at the eastern Kern County and the eastern communities. It's not just Valley, although we are called Central Valley. They're the Central Valley counties, and the, we know that the counties extend all the way over. So <laughs> I'm going to be meeting with Mary Beth Garrison and a number of other people. So. Um, We'll just sort of go through this. The idea here is that we are the central, uh, the beating heart of California. Um, we do have um, a lot of really great resource-based um, industries here. We're starting to branch out. We're getting into more manufacturing, et cetera. We have a lot of potential. We also have a lot of hurdles here. We have lower pay. We have higher incidences of uh, poverty and drug use, et cetera. Uh, lower educational attainment. It's all that kind of stuff that sort of feeds into itself. and um, 
we end up getting kind of a status quo situation where our, our potential is unrealized. Um, and the idea of BizFed is we will bring the voices together of business to try and amplify um, what business needs to thrive. And once we do get, get it moving and thriving, then um, that tends to lift all the boats. Um, we unify by having, as, as I sort of explained, um, members setting the agenda. You don't have to have lockstep. It's a, it's a two-thirds vote, by the way, for the BizFed uh, board to actually take a position on something. Everyone who's a member of BizFed is a voting member on the board, um, and things come up through committees. Um, so Chevron doesn't outweigh, say, the Ameri African American Farmers Coalition. They both have the same vote, so that you have a, a, a much more egalitarian kind of way of looking at it. And nobody, there is, a, a lot of people have asked me, like, who's running BizFed? You know, is it the oil companies? Is it farming? No, it's everybody who's a member of BizFed is running BizFed. Um, these are the logos of, of some of the members. I think I might, this might be a little bit old, I might have a few more members, but I can't remember because it's been so long since I put this together. <laughs> but you can see we go from um, logistics to farming to oil. And as I said, we are, we're, we're being, uh, this is the model that's um, s established by Los Angeles County Business Federation. We are not run by them, we're just using their model. Um, one of the um, members uh, is Wispa, Patty Senecal. Wispa was one of the founding or members, and um, her quote here is that business was beaten down and that they weren't getting anywhere, and BizFed came along and has at least given a lot of hope. And um, part of the BizFed model, we're starting off small here, but in the LA area, they've also created a PAC and a business, um, a sort of a think tank, an institute, and they all operate the same way. It's a pack of packs. It's not, it's not, it doesn't take away from any of the other packs. It wants to bring them all together so, so when they can agree on stuff, they can move together in force. Same thing with the institute. It's bringing together a number of think tanks. We don't have that here yet. It's, as I said, just me. So <laughs> I'm, we're, we're going to get there at some point, but um, that's, the, that's sort of the overall model. Um, and then we've got 10 years of growth out of um, BizFed Los Angeles. A lot of people ask me, you know, what have they done in, in Los Angeles? And I will tell you that, um, and I don't think it's on here because it's kind of too new. Uh, one of the things that I was really impressed by that happened just recently is that the Port of Los Angeles and Port of LA have, um, they had a, a clean air um, mandate that they had to come up with. And initially, uh, the proposal was that um, both of those ports would have to get to zero emissions by, I'm going to mess this up, but I think it's 2030, zero emissions by 2030 or 2020, I can't remember, I think it's 2030. Um, and that uh, the fuel would be dictated by the regulators. And the businesses got together and they said, look, it's going to work a lot better for us if you say near zero by 2030 and you let us figure out how to achieve that because the Port of Los Angeles and the Port of LA have achieved great um, reductions in air pollutions, basically sort of by grassroots ground up kind of thing. And so they, uh, BizFed worked on that and got that message to the boards and they did in fact adopt that, um, that proposal of near zero and that the, they were agnostic on fuel, that it would be a left up to the uh, businesses to do. And so I thought that was a really big win at least getting uh, businesses to the table to be able to talk to the commissioners and have meetings with them. It was, um, it was, it was impressive, I thought. But you can read through this if you, if you have time about all the different other um, things that they've done. And how they do this is we share a lot of communication and then we, we really rely on the members. We get those, the middle thing there with the, um, with the blue top, those are white papers. They're very well researched. They're one page. Uh, they're one page papers, and they get sent out to the members after the topic has been vetted and researched. And so, um, and then you, you send the action alerts to the members. The members then can take those actions. The actions are typically like, here's here's who you need to talk to. Here's how you contact your um, representative, etc. Here's how you get your email to them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it increases the civic actions and the civic engagement by business members. Um, I won't, again, this, these are more things that, that they've done there. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, we could have been working on if we had a BizFed Central Valley, uh, is working on Sigma. Um, one of the guys that was working with uh, the state legislature on Sigma, which is the state, the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act um, that uh, was instituted in 2014, 
he basically, Eric Averett with Rosedale Rio Bravo was basically working um, almost kind of alone, uh, trying to figure it out, trying to get the information out to people. And, and his comment to me was that if we, if we had had uh, BizFed Central Valley at the time, it would have really extended <coughs> his reach to be able to just get information out to people. Sometimes that's kind of part of the, that's part of the big hurdle is people just don't understand what's coming down the pike. Um, these are sort of some, um, just a look at how we can leverage a lot of momentum that we've got going on. We've got the 2018 uh, gubernatorial um, election. BizFed will be putting together a, a candidates forum. We want it to be here in the Central Valley, so we're already working on that. Um, we've got, the potential for BizFed here is huge with our business associations and, and the numerous electeds that we want to try and engage. And I put this in here because so many people um, are really concerned about Los Angeles. No, we are independent. And one of the things that we were talking about is uh, BizFed LA has been opposed to the potential of repealing the gas tax, which kind of, you know, is having its own faltering situation right now. A lot of biz businesses here in the Central Valley are not opposed to the repealing of the of the gas tax. So if, if we were, say, up and running now and, and BizFed LA was taking its position, we would fight our own fights on that. That's fine. But where we can come together, um, it would be obviously a pretty powerful situation. Um, and then uh, these last couple of bullet points here just really kind of list exactly how things kind of work when a, when a topic comes to BizFed. So I don't want to read through it. You guys can read through uh, the packet that I handed you. Um, and that's it. There's my, there's my face. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody have any questions? No questions? I guess not. Oh, yeah, I need to get out to Taft Rotary, yes. <laughs> I like going out to Taft. Taft's one of my favorite places. Um, in, also in the packet, um, just to let you know, I do have the frequently asked questions. This explains that, you know, that we aren't a lobbying group and how things work, just the sort of biz-fed basics of how it works. Um, and I've got... Um, I think two of the packets are missing this, but we do have the LA BizFed brochure, and you can look in here for the membership. They, it's extremely impressive. They have about, I don't know, 200 members, and it runs the gamut um, from all kinds of different associations and businesses. They also have started to get a lot of um, government agencies uh, asking to join BizFed, which has been kind of interesting going to their meetings because a lot of the longtime BizFed members are a little leery about that. <laughs> Not exactly sure what to make of it. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Lois, let me ask you a question. What kind of membership of uh, financial commitment is required for membership into the BizFeb? Um, well, glad you asked that. Here are these two brochures here. We have two different levels of membership. Um, one is for associations, and the other is for investors. Um, associations, which is any nonprofit organization that represents businesses doing business in any of the, our counties. Um, for those organizations, uh, we, we charge $100 to $1,000 a year. Um, we made it very inexpensive. We didn't want money to be a hurdle for any associations because associations are, obviously they bring the people and the numbers with them and um, they also bring a lot of expertise. We're talking chambers of commerce and trade associations, et cetera. They are working with businesses on a regular basis, um, and they know the they know the issues, and so and they bring the membership. And so we really wanted those associations to be able to join very easily. The investor level is for um, individual companies, or say like a nonprofit like um, Clinica Sierra Vista, which doesn't represent businesses. These dues are more expensive because we need money to stand up the organization and keep it going. <laughs> so it's $5,000 a year, I think, is the bottom, and then up to $50,000 a year. Um, and so that's kind of how we do it. It's sort of a symbiotic relationship. You've got the businesses that help stand the, a, the organization up, and then you've got the membership organizations that really put the oomph when you push and you start actually um, going out with your messages to politicians. They bring, they bring the boots on the ground. Um, so that's kind of how it was it was structured and has uh, worked pretty well. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. I've got a question, Lois. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, does the um, uh, L.A. BizFed have representation from some of the uh, uh, lesser government organizations or organizations?
organizations, the organizations of government down in the LA Basin, such as Southern California Association of Governments. Have some of those members joined? You know, I don't know if the associations of governments have joined. I do know, like, the assessor's office just joined. And, um, of course, I don't have my glasses. Um, and another organization, uh, I, know that, I know that a COG was there at one of the meetings here recently when I was down there, but I don't know if they're a member. Um, and uh, one of the public works, I'm not sure, because obviously there, this, it takes in LA County, so I'm not sure if it was a, a city or if it was the county organization. But I do know the LA County Assessor's Office just joined them. Um, and this here, I can leave this with you, shows all the members which I can't read because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> so. and, and kind of related to that, uh, there is a partnership for the San Joaquin Valley. It's got a, a niece uh, with UC Fresno. Mm -hmm. The uh, folks there, it's actually a governor's uh, appointed executive order that uh, formed that group. And then uh, here in Kern, we have the Cabrales, uh, the, the Cogs in the San Joaquin Valley have a um, I guess I've won uh, awards from you guys. <laughs> so, so, so it's kind of a top-down government organization and a bottom-up government organization of organizations. Uh, the, I don't know whether those groups uh, somehow forming a relationship with ISFED is, is something that might Yeah, we would, uh, we would definitely entertain it and like to have them aboard, obviously transportation is going to be one of our it's one of our key industry sectors if you look on the on the um, grid that I put together um, so we would definitely be interested in, in working with them and there are some there are some agencies and organizations that aren't members of BizFed LA but they do have partnerships with them so there's different ways of um, you know sharing information I mean the whole goal is and I think everybody in this room is you know not opposed to it is to try and find ways to maximize our economic potential and transportation is obviously a key issue especially having driven back and forth from Fresno to here several times in the last two weeks <laughs> so okay thank you very much all right well thank you very much for your time thank you meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Garola. Present. B. Smith. I am here. Wood? Here. Pasquale? Here. Mock? Cantu? Here. Mauer? <coughs> here. Prout? Cryer? Here. P. Smith? Here. Wegman? Here. Couch? <coughs> Scrivener? Miller? Here. Kara? Here. Kiernan? Here. Thank you. Item number three, public comments. <coughs> This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff for factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting, please state your name and address for the record prior to making a presentation. Do we have any public comments? Yes. Good evening, Ray Scott, Bakersfield, also present for Keep California Beautiful. Two items that I, I presented to you this evening. One is the annual K through 12 recycling challenge. 
any school within the state of California, K through 12, can compete in our monthly, our annual monthly uh, recycling competition where we award $18,000 to schools for having the highest overall weight and CPI per capita per, per student. Um, City of Arvin has done very well for the last three years in this competition in which really has been part of the basis of Kern County's overall. Um, Kern County has for two, three straight years have taken second place as far as the counties in the state of California. Of course, next to LA County, which they only have a thousand schools in LA County. <laughs> but Kern County takes 11 of the 48 awards three years in a row. That's good. Which is outstanding. And so there's still time, because it's in February, for the schools to register. It's very simple to register, simple to participate. They just simply need to recycle and turn their, um, it's all done on the web, so it's very simple. Second item is Cal State Bakersfield this year is where I'm bringing the state press conference to because Cal State Bakersfield is going to be the second collegiate affiliate for Keep America Beautiful in the country. And this, of course, is because of all the things that they do with Keep Bakersfield Beautiful, do with all of the sustainability programs they have at Cal State, that they were given this honor for being the second affiliate in the country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Through the chair, I have a question Yes. over here. Do you have a business card? I'm a principal of a middle school. I'd love to get your information on yes, how sir. to register. Do you have it here? It's right here? Okay. It's also, yes, it's also on the corner of the, of the flyer. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next. Good evening, Dixie Walters. My address is Lerdo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just a couple of quick updates on our, on our um, program that we have out there. So we're beginning our third quarter in fiscal year 1718 um, with our fourth contract with Kern Cog. We're very happy to continue that, that partnership. Um, since July of 2017, we've had about 90 work sites we've worked on. We've used about 712 hours for detention deputies, multiplied by six, the hours of six inmates for about 4,272 man hours of labor, saving about $113,000 on average. <clears throat> um, we've targeted several areas, Delano, Shafter, McFarland, Lamont, Lost Hills, mainly December and January. We hit Lost Hills, Shafter, and Lamont. And um, <coughs> that is about it for today. Super short and quick. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you okay. very much. Thanks so much. Do we have any more public comments? Seeing none, we'll move right along. The consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff and will be approved by one motion if no member of the committee or public wishes to comment or ask questions. If comment or discussion is desired by anyone, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered in the listed sequence with an opportunity for any member of the public to address the committee concerning the item before the action is taken. We have items A through J. Do I have a motion? Uh, roll. Second. Roll call vote. Garola? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Wood? Aye. Pasquel? Aye. Cantu? Aye. Maurer? Aye. Pryor? Yes. P. Smith? Aye. Wegman? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Miller? Yes. Hara? Yes. Kiernan? Yes. Thank you. Kern Cog Regional Transportation Improvement Program Policy Update. Mr. Stromoglia. Thank you, Madam Chair and Directors. The California Transportation Commission has taken significant steps in revising the State Transportation Improvement Program guidelines in response to state and federal mandates to improve health, air quality, modal choices, and safety in transportation investments. Projects introduced into the State Transportation Improvement Program require 
defined outputs for performance measures that meet regional, state, and federal transportation asset goals. The state must report on its achievements to meet defined baseline goals and objectives to the federal government for all project investments. Regional prioritization and ranking analysis, that's us, now require disclosure of performance measure outputs consistent with approved statewide met metric outputs. These statewide outputs implement the advance of statewide baseline commitments now required by federal legislation. These approved statewide metric outputs are outlined in current California Transportation Commission STIP guidelines and as well as the Caltrans Asset Management Plan. The purpose of this report today then is to move forward with the update of the Kern Cog project delivery policies and procedures regional transportation improvement program chapter which was last updated in 2008 but now requires additional updating due to requirements for performance measure outputs. The update will be further discussed in an upcoming workshop uh, number one and there will be many scheduled for January 24th 2018 next Wednesday. Uh, at the workshop, Kern Cog will present a process overview and the timeline, which was in the staff report tonight as well. Uh, over the next sev several months, we will review several sources of performance measure metrics, which will be considered for addition into the policy. We will then update the implementation element that outlines the process to identify, review, and prioritize multimodal regional projects <coughs> using the updated performance measure metrics. Uh, that's very important. You know, that was something we haven't done in uh, almost two decades, actually. After the policy is updated, KernCog staff expects to begin the process of evaluating both current projects of regional significance and newly nominated projects of significance we will then approach our regional project needs with a set of fresh eyes. Um, I do have uh, you know, a final statement here, but before I make that statement, I think there's one other thing I, I, I want to say to you that's very important as we start this effort. There are many new transportation programs now that are out there. Uh, so many of them are discretionary in nature. We can't emphasize enough how competitive it has become and so many of the components that people want that your project is going to um, improve, if you will. And so even to the point of maybe taking our tip off of that chapter, your projects of regional significance should be measured in ways that could potentially set them up to become a shop project, maybe a stip project, maybe a freight project, you know, for a future freight uh, call for projects, if you will, you know, especially a federal call for projects. So it's not just about mimicking what the STIP guidelines are doing. It's really about mimicking everything that the state is doing in all of its spectrum, you know, uh, including freight, including uh, operational improvements, shall we say. Uh, many regions do multimodal already because it's appropriate for them, mass transportation, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll get to those, as they say, bridges when we cross them. But for now, um, the big effort that your staff and our staff will be doing is really looking at all those performance measures, seeing which ones overlap, which ones are different, and how we can categorize them and fairly <coughs> integrate them into a weighting system, et cetera. Sounds simple. It won't be, but that's OK. That's what we're going to do. So to conclude, finally, Kern Cog staff strongly recommends that all projects be reviewed <coughs> that have not advanced to construction. We do not see the point of attempting to sell a project to the CTC and again, might, might I add, to anybody else, whether it's the president or whoever or the governor, uh, that is not going to contribute to mandated state and federal performance measure goals. And so that does conclude my, my report and be happy to try to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions from the board? 
seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Yep. Board members meeting reports. Anybody have a report? No? Caltrans report. Good evening. First project I'd like to report on is the Kern Avenue pedestrian overcrossing. And that's to um, make that particular overcrossing ADA compliant. And um, that project actually was completed in December, on December 20th. So um, I won't be re reporting on that anymore and I'm, um, hopefully it turned out just fine and everybody's happy. Oh, it's up there. Thanks. Oh, it is, it looks good. Oh, that's the, that's the one. <laughs> I, I'm not connecting the dots. Yes. <laughs> it's famous. So it did turn out good. Answer my question. Okay, now we've got the Formosa State Route 46 and 99 bridge replacement. Uh, PG&E, AT&T have completed their uh, relocation west of uh, Route 99. That was done December 22nd. The North Kern Water District shut down um, the water in Laredo Canal on January 1st, um, and it'll stay um, closed. There's a window up until January 20th, so around the corner. So um, that was to complete installing a, a culvert in there. Uh, this activity um, actually it was completed yesterday, my notes say. Uh, work for the next four weeks are going to be construct temporary southbound off-ramp, construct the frontage road south of 46, construct temporary southbound on-ramp, and complete um, the rest of the drainage work um, at this location. This Taft Highway uh, rehabilitation, pavement rehabilitation project near the city of Bakersfield north of Herring Road overcrossing to Pache Pacheco Road undercrossing. The construction contract was approved, uh, but this project, due to the weather, is um, in winter suspension. Hopefully, weather permitting, they'll start up in February or March. Uh, State Route 46 um, Highway, uh, that's to widen 46 from two lanes to four lanes between Lost Hills Road and I-5. Long overdue project, we're excited about that project was awarded January 11th. We anticipate that they should be starting um, uh, construction or moving earth and you should see activity in the next two to three weeks. Uh, Cottonwood East Rehab on State Route 58 in Bakersfield from Cottonwood Road undercrossing to just east of the 58 and 184 separation. Uh, pavement rehabilitation project. It was awarded December 29th to security paving. Their contract should be approved by February 1st and they have 55 days from uh, that approval date to start work. Kern 65 rumble strips, um, installing rumble strips on uh, 65 and Kern from 7th Standard Road to north of 190 to Avenue 196. The bid opening uh, was yesterday. Kern 33 and 119 rumble strips, that is center, center line rubble strips on 33 and 119 at various locations. Construction contract approved, but that one isn't going to be starting until um, 1st of April. And that concludes my report. If there's questions or anything I can help with, I'd be glad to do that. Any questions for Gail, board members? No? Thank you, Gail. Thanks. Executive Director's Report. Good evening, Madam Chair and board members. Uh, on January 5th, I was joined by Vice Chairman Bob Smith uh, and attended the Truxton Avenue Operational Improvements Project here in Bakersfield, which is part of the larger Centennial Corridor. Congratulations to Bakersfield and Great job delivering that project one fiscal year early. We were able to capture funds to do that. Um, Kern Cog hosted a tran transit symposium on January 10th. Many of uh, staff members from your cities attended. It was very well attended. And uh, Mayor of Bakersfield, Karen Go gave the introduction. I saw the mayor of Delano there. There were several elected officials and many um, 
many of your staff members. Uh, very well attended, and thank you all for attending. Uh, a lot of great information was put out. On January 12th, up on the screens, I attended along with uh, uh, several elected officials from McFarland and McFarland staff and law enforcement, the ribbon cutting for the brand new pedestrian overcrossing. I, I believe it's probably the, the only um, bridge in Kern County that I know of with, with artwork, <laughs> and you can see it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. It uh, looks great, and Mayor Cantor, do you have an anything to say about it? You know what, um, it's, been a, it's been great for our city, we all love it, but we do have a few disappointed residents. Unfortunately, the girls cross country team <laughs> has, is now currently running a little bit better than the boys team, and so they came to city council and complained that there were no female silhouettes on there so so we're in trouble <laughs> but uh, for the most part it's been well received and want to thank you Aaron and, and Kirk Cox staff and Caltrans as well thank you for all your support thank you Mayor Cantu uh, January 24th Joe mentioned in his report uh, we'll be holding our first of probably at least a half a dozen in my estimation uh, workshop on the art tip I, my estimate is that process will take between six months and a year. Hopefully we can, we can get through it relatively quickly. And uh, I, I'm not sure if Joe made it clear, but Gail, you may want to weigh in on this. This is not something that we are doing <coughs> just because uh, Kern Cog is initiating this. We, we are doing this because we, we have to and federal law has changed, Gail. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just not, it's not just federal law. Um, the new, uh, with SB1 and um, the new Fix It First and the money that we're receiving for our shop program <laughs> is grueling. The accountability, uh, the performance measures, we have to uh, just give you a, just a feel for it. They have a special new tool where we put data in that actually we, we have targets we have to meet with regard to <coughs> taking pavement from poor to fair to good. Malcolm has committed to a certain percentage of our payment, pavement being in good condition, um, and we have 10 years to do that with that money. Um, trying to calculate and cost-benefit ratios, air quality, complete streets, and all that, it, it's unbelievable. But the taxpayers and what the legislature did and stuck their neck out for, um, we are promising to give them their money's worth. But CTC is saying, don't just give me anything. We're not just, this is no blank check. I'm not just gonna check and go, okay. And you're competing against the state. And so just, and even, um, um, Aaron mentioned the freight corridor. Uh, we have five projects that we've nominated. One of them happens to be Centennial's on that for the 58 connection. Um, and the application, I've been, my staff's been working with data, trying to do um, BC ratios, doing the air quality, um, trying to tell a story. We have gone back and forth with headquarters saying, it's not enough, it's not enough, tell your story because you're gonna compete with the rest of the state and trying to make sure that the Valley gets their projects um, you know, approved. Um, we, because there's only gonna, Caltrans is only gonna forward a certain amount. So every district is submitting five projects. So, and only a few are chosen. So the shop is going through it, the STIP projects. Um, we, the first time we actually got wind of it with regard to the STIP really, is that um, my staff was asked to do uh, BC calculations and we went, we've never done that before for, for the you know, RTP projects and so we're, we're learning with you as we go. So just so you know, it's definitely not anything that the COGS are doing. You know, it's being accountable and giving the taxpayers their money's worth and they don't want a, just a, any old project, they're gonna, they want their, their, like I say, their money's worth and they want the best product for the money. Thanks, Gail. And, and this, this has already begun to trickle down to each of your cities and the county. 
when you re receive transportation funds now, um, both the COG and the state and the federal government will expect you to have uh, pavement management systems in place and you fix the, the worst pavement first and you, you gradually bring your pavement up to a, a certain standard and then track your investments with uh, with a tool not just as an example spread out the money between the wards if your city has wards but but it, ha it has to be done with a, a strict engineering calculation benefit cart course ca benefit cost calculations yeah. And, and Gail briefly touched on it in her remarks, but over the next three years in, in Kern County, especially in, in the center of Kern County, you will see almost continuous construction on our, our heavily used freight corridors, Route 58, mm -hmm. Route um, 99, and I-5. So those of you uh, that come up and down 99, Madam Chair and uh, Supervisor Skidner on 58, um, it, it will be torn up for several years now. The route between Bakersfield and uh, and Tehachapi will have almost continuous construction for at least four years. Same thing for 99. So uh, I'm sorry, but uh, <laughs> but it's a good investment. It's a good investment. Just have a, a couple more items, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, there'll be a stip hearing in Irvine next week on January 25th, and I will testify on uh, Kern Cog submittal. January 31st and February 1st is the CTC meeting in Sacramento. I will also be attending that. Several of the cities have ATP projects, including Bakersfield, Wasco, Tehachapi, and McFarland on that agenda. You may want to give your staff a heads up. And finally, March 21st and 22nd, there's another CTC meeting in, uh, I believe, Orange or Irvine, where the 2018 STIP and the 2018 SHOP will be adopted. Will be adopted. I will be attending that as well as uh, several of your cities and county staff. Subject to any of your questions, Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Any questions for the director? Seeing none. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, the agenda for current Council of Governments. Um, does the roll call reflect the same as before, or do you want to do a roll call? Okay, thank you. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the council. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none. Consent agenda. All items on the consent agenda are considered to be routine and non-controversial by Kern Cog staff. We have items A through D. Do we have a motion? I'll move approval. Second. Roll call vote. Garola? Yes. B. Smith? Yes. Wood? Yes. Pasquale? Yes. Cantu? Aye. Mauer? Aye. Cryer? Yes. Smith? Aye. Wegman? Yes. Ms. Rickner? Aye. It is orange. It is orange. Item number four. Appointment of the community at large members to the Regional Planning Advisor C Committee. Ms. Napier. Thank you, Madam Chairman and m members of the board. The RPAC bylaws provide for appointment of three at large members representing varied economic, social, and geographic sectors of Kern County. Applications were received from the following individuals. Jonathan Becker, Program Manager for Bike Bakersfield. Eric Donnens, Reservoir Engineer for Barry Petroleum Company. Barry Ninke, retired Kern County Traffic Engineer. And we did receive a, an application from Patricia Leal, who is the Policy Advocate for Leadership Council for Justice and Account Accountability. But she had to pull her application due to scheduling conflicts. The two community at large members that are leading the RPAC are Patricia Pore. Home Builders Association of Bakersfield, and Richard Groh, President, Kern River Valley Revitalization in Lake Isabella, who have both served the maximum of six consecutive years on the RPAC. Executive Director Aaron Hakimi reviewed and verified applicant eligibility as required by the bylaws. 
the applications are now being presented to the Kern Cog Board of Directors for appointment up to two community at-large members to the RPAC and their term will begin at the next regularly, regularly scheduled meeting on January 31st, 2018. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Jonathan Becker and Eric Danans to the RPAC. We'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Item number five. For year 2016-17, Current Council of Government's Financial and Compliance Audit Reports. Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Uh, staff, staff received the final draft of the Kern Cog Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports for the fiscal year ended June 30th, 2017. This is an unqualified audit. Um, it identified no material weaknesses or recommendations. And tonight I would like to introduce Naraj Dada from uh, Brown Armstrong, who is the lead on our audit this year. Thank you. Thank you. Corporation. Um, we are the external auditors and uh, we performed this audit. I was uh, involved th in this audit um, in depth this year also and last year too. Uh, just to go over the purpose of our audit, the objective of our audit is to just obtain a reasonable assurance like uh, uh, on the uh, uh, on the CAFR which is prepared by uh, CONCOX management if it, it is materially misstated or not. So I'm pleased to report that uh, our opinion is, uh, as Becky mentioned, it's an unmodified opinion, it's a clean opinion. It's the ha highest form of assurance which an external auditor can provide, and it is included on page one and page number two of the CAFO. Uh, along with the independent auditor's report, we also issue two separate reports, one on the compliance for the government auditing standards, and uh, second on the internal controls which are operating at the current call. Those two reports are also included in the CAFR. They are at the back of the financial statements, page number 62 and 63, which contains the compliance report on the government auditing standards. And that also includes your PTME share funding and uh, the expenses which are incurred by CONCOG during the current year. And the second report, which is on the internal controls, that is on page number 64 and 65. And again, like uh, as I mentioned, these are the clean reports. We don't have any findings to basically report. Um, also, like we are required to basically communicate uh, certain items to the board of members, uh, which are included in this S 114 letter, which is in your package. Um, we are required to report if we have encountered any difficulties in performing the audit. So again, I'm pleased to uh, announce we were very happy uh, to work with Becky and her team. And this is the second year in a row, like we have completed the audit in a timely fashion and we have issued our report by December 31st. There are certain estimates and assumptions which are made uh, in the financial statements, again, by the management of the CONCOG, and we uh, fully agree with those estimates and assumptions, and there are no disagreements in this regard. Uh, with that, I conclude my presentation. I'll be happy to take any questions if you have. Any questions for the auditor? Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Accept and file. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Right. Item six, ride share advertising. Ms. Campbell. Thank you, Madam Chair and other members of the board. Kern Cog advertises two of its programs regularly, our Commute Kern ride share program and our Kern 511 real-time traffic information. And what we've found is in the summer months when we start to gear up and kick off Rideshare Week in the fall, we see that the San Joaquin Valley Air District is also having a huge campaign promoting uh, things such as carpooling, van pooling, things to help clean our air when the heat is so intense that it kind of uh, captures the emissions and, and kind of seals it to where it's harder for people to breathe. So ride sharing is really important, not only in the summertime, but throughout the year. And what we've done is we've we evaluated our advertising. Typically what we would do is focus most of our advertising dollars in television, radio, and print, and some digital. 
and uh, we have done some outdoor. And what we'd like to do is ask the Air District to join us and let's send the same message out together, combining our efforts and using the uh, mobile outdoor, like putting advertising on buses and city vehicles. We've been doing that with Get Bus for a couple of years and it's been very successful for us. One advantage to that too is that Get Bus does get a return on using their vehicles as a means of advertising, so it's beneficial for them as well. Uh, we did reach out to Syed Sadr I'm going to say his name wrong. Sadrudin Sadre Syed <laughs> over at the uh, San Joaquin Valley Air District, the executive director, and we expressed the interest in combining efforts in advertising rideshare together and using these the mobile outdoor advertising as a, a means to do that. And we are willing to pour more of our money in that mode of uh, advertising as well. So we're we're asking for your permission and open up uh, discussion rather about continuing to do this t this relationship with the air district and trying to reach out into some of your communities as well okay any questions for Ms. Campbell comments okay this is just an action item so it's just for information thank you very okay, much thank you Kern Motorist Aid Authority California Highway Patrol Agreement amended Ms. Napier yes thank you madam chairman um, this is actually just a, a cleanup item from the removal of the call boxes. Uh, we have had an agreement for many years now um, with the California Highway Patrol to answer the, uh, the call boxes. Um, we approved a new agreement in April of 2017 for a three-year term uh, through June 30th of 2020. And this amendment will reduce that um, to end actually it has already ended December 31st of 2017 in an amount not to exceed $4,800 so again this is just a cleanup item and the uh, s the attorney has um, reviewed this item all right any questions for Miss Napier do we have a motion motion on staff's recommendation second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed thank you Item B, status of the Kern Motors Aid Authority's call box program. Ms. Napier. Yes, thank you again. This sounds like the Ms. Napier show, doesn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> um, in June of 2017, after consideration of several options, the board acting as the Kern Motors Aid Authority directed staff to remove the entire system of call boxes as of December 31st, which has been done. In October 2015, Senate Bill number 516 was approved by the governor and it authorized the use of monies received by KMA, KMAA for not only implementation, maintenance, and operations of a motorist aid system, including call boxes, but also for traveler information systems, um, intelligent transportation system, which is we call ITS, architecture and infrastructure, and other transportation demand management services and safety-related hazard and obstruction removal. Currently, as you know, KMAA uses the monies it receives to provide safety-related hazard and obstruction removal through the Kern County Sheriff's Department and through the Keep Bakersfield Beautiful Foundation. The money is also used to maintain and operate the Kern 511 Traveler Assistance Program. If the board desires, staff can work with the cities to determine the individual need for eligible equipment to be used on the state highways that are in their jurisdictions. Items could include um, but this is a limited list. Portable changeable message signs to be used in high traffic slash pedestrian areas, safety lighting, um, ITS architecture and infrastructure, or other items that um, would comply, but the cities would have the option of bringing up items to us. So we are just looking for your recommendations as to whether you want us to go down this path and if you have any other ideas. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, through the chair, I was going to ask, um, would that be for projects that are on highways themselves, or could they be used for major, um, how do you put that, uh, uh, transportation corridors through a, through a community? Uh, through the chair, Ma Mayor Wood, the idea that I've floated with several of the cities and the county um, is not, not we, we don't have enough money, nor do we generate enough money to invest in the large overhead permanent signs. 
but the law clearly allows an investment in changeable message signs, uh, uh, which are typically trailer mounted. Many of your cities already uh, maintain several of them. The idea that I've floated and I, and I want to sort of get a thumbs up from you, keep on going down this road or don't go down this road is KernCog has the ability to probably pur purchase in the first year uh, a dozen, maybe as many as two dozen of those signs, distribute them out to all the cities. Um, the cities would take ownership of them with the understanding that when and if Caltrans needs them for emergencies on the state highway system that they can come into, say, Tachapi's yard with their permission and come and get it and use it. Um, I've talked to at least half a dozen of the city managers and public works directors, including uh, the county of Kern, city of Bakersfield, Tehachapi, Shafter, um, McFarland, and most uh, all of them are okay with that idea. What I'm looking for tonight is um, if I'm heading in the right direction, if, w if I am, I'll continue those discussions and eventually bring uh, an item back to the board about the details of how much these are going to cost. Um, uh, what I envision is uh, uh, s the first year we would buy a certain number of these items, see how it works. As money continues to flow in, we collect about $700,000 a year. Um, we would, if the cities and the county uh, like the products that we're buying and they are useful, we would continue to buy more. Does that answer your question, Mayor? Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Bill? Yes, through the chair. Um, is this an opportunity to advertise Kern Council of Governments on the signs, perhaps, uh, as an outreach, or not, it's not that intent, or, uh, I mean, sponsored by, or, okay. No, the, the intent <laughs> is is crystal clear. Th these, you know, if we go down this road, it's not, you know, the messages on the signs are not, you know, bake sale at City Hall tomorrow. It's, <laughs> it's, it's it needs to be s safety right. related. You know, uh, wear your seatbelt or fog, or um, say uh, if during special events like in Bakersfield, you know, exit uh, for the Grand Fondo. That would be a great example used for traffic control. Mm -hmm. uh, not, you know, stay in Tehachapi or <laughs> it needs to be, it's the legislation is, is crystal clear. It needs to be, there needs to be a safety nexus. If you remember, that's when we went down the road of picking up the debris along the highways, it was because there was a safety nexus. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, this was an information item. So move right along to the executive director's report. Good evening again, Madam Chair uh, and board members. On the current COG agenda tonight, I know we went through it relatively quick, but I want to congratulate the um, recipients of our regional awards who are here tonight. Certainly, uh, Council Member Smith, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, just a few highlights, the Kern County Public Works, uh, who we work very closely with, is receiving an award. Get Bus is receiving an award. Thomas Rhodes Improvement Program. Um, City of Bakersfield's budgeting process. Bike Bakersfield. City of Taft. City of McFarland. Um, City of California City, all for law enforcement activities. Um, Supervisor Scribner, I've talked to you about this one. Uh, Nancy Lawson and her and uh, Elsa Martinez for their efforts in the uh, Kern County Administrative Office, the Bakersfield Fire Department, um, the former city manager of California City, and uh, the many of you know him, Les, Les Clark. Congratulations to uh, all the recipients. And as a reminder, tickets are going very fast. There's already been at least 40 purchased by City of McFarland. Uh, we usually have seats for about 200 people, and we've sold 60, 85. So pl please uh, get your tickets quickly. Um, uh, I appreciate the remarks on the audit, but I wanted to thank all of you.
um, especially those of you who've been here for um, the last uh, six years, know where we came from, where we were three plus years late on our audits. Um, with your help and with the extreme, extremely hard work of our administrative staff, including Robert, who's gone, Greg, Fasika, Becky, um, and, An and Angie, uh, we've gotten to the point where we're, we are now delivering what you and uh, your constituents expect, which is an un unqualified orbit. Thank you all for your help in that process. Next, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be having our annual meeting with Caltrans, Federal Highway Administration, and the Federal Transit Administration. This year, we are inviting several transit agencies at, uh, the at FTA's request. That meeting will take place on January 29th. Golden Empire Transit has already in been invited, and I believe um, Council Member Pasquale, that uh, city of Delano, uh, transit rep has been requested to come to that meeting also. That's January 29th. Y Delano and uh, Golden Empire Transit are the only two large transit systems in the county. Uh, January 29th is also the KCAC dinner in Delano. Um, our next board meeting on February 15th, prior to that board meeting from 5 to 6 p.m., the um, County Clerk will be holding a City Selection Committee meeting. Those of you who are participating in that know what that's about, and that will be from 5 to 6 p.m. Uh, let me know if, if you want dinner brought in early uh, for the February meeting, and I'll arrange for that. Uh, I've already went over the regional awards. As a reminder, the dinner is March 1st. It's at Seven Oaks Country Club. And uh, please call Tammy if you're interested in coming. And finally, well, second to last, March 6th to 7th is an our annual Valley Voice meeting in Sacramento. If you're interested in attending, please let me know. In your folder tonight, it's only been about 40 years uh, in the making. There's a groundbreaking for the Kramer Junction project uh, <laughs> tomorrow, 11 a.m. The groundbreaking will be held at the Boron Rest Area. Uh, as, as many of you who travel that um, corridor know that the Kramer Junction project is actually in San Bernardino County, but it is very important to the people of Kern County. Congratulations to uh, San Bernardino and Caltrans for finally, finally making that project happen. There's a uh, timeline in your uh, folder, our outreach efforts. Schedule of cash disbursements uh, from November to December. Uh, Mr. Stromaglia's addition of the <coughs> projects of regional significance. A opinion piece by um, former Secretary of Transportation and former uh, Congressman Ray LaHood. An article on, many of you know, Fran Flores's granddaughter and Dan, uh, Dean Flores's daughter, which uh, I believe made uh, national, uh, or at least regional news. Congratulations to her. And uh, an article by the city manager of Tatchby. Uh, that was a, a great job and some great press for Tatchby. And an article about um, our own Pete Smith talking about uh, the bicycling pedestrian needs in, in Eastern Kern. Subject to any of your questions, uh, Madam Chair or board members, that concludes my report. All right, thank you. Do we have any member statements? Thank you. Seeing none, we have an award tonight mm -hmm. for Robert Snotty. Robert Snoddy, Regional Planner, for 15 years of dedicated service to the current Council of Governments. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. This meeting's adjourned.